if I choose, so I can just multiply by n at the n, n at the end. So let's say, what is the probability of of this occurring in one row? So I have five cells here, and yeah, please note that I need at least three. I need at least three winning numbers in one row. So if one row is a winning row, there will be no other row which is a winning row. So that eliminates a lot of possibilities. That is, I, I need not worry about uh, a configuration in which this row is a winning row and this row is also. If it was two, I could have had a co configuration in which two rows simultaneously were winning rows, which would have probably required something like inclusion exclusion, which he'll be covering in next class. So because it is three and three is the major 3 is majority in 5 there will at most be one row which is winning now the first observation that you must make is that uh, it does not depend on the number numbers actually chosen why does not why does it not depend on the numbers actually chosen can anyone give an easy explanation out both are anyway random the number on the ticket is also random the number winning price is also random so right uh, that is you can in fact just renumber that is assume the numbers was an A, B, C, D, E. I can just renumber A, S, 1, B, S, 2 and the probability should not change. That is, it should hold for any, 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 any 1, 1 renumbering of uh, the numbers. So, so observation 1, it does not depend on the numbers. So, let's just assume for simplicity that the numbers chosen are 1, 2, 5. So, okay. What are the independent cases here? Now, I am just considering the uh, solution for one row. So, for one row, it can either have three winning numbers or it could have four winning numbers or five winning numbers note that all these three things are independent that is you will not have a case where it has three and four neither would you have a case that is all, all these events are independent so what are the pro so we can uh, we can just compute the probability that it has three and add it with the probability that it has four and add it with the probability that it has five so and finally multiply by the number of rows which is equal to n so what is the probability that a given row has three numbers from uh, the winning numbers and two numbers from two numbers which are not winning uh, or in fact she actually said that so uh, the probability would be 5c3 into uh, there are 5n numbers out of which 5 are winning 5n minus 5c5 but what she missed out is that for a combination of huh? oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what you missed out is that in a combination, let's say if it's 1, 2, 3 and I say I choose 10 and 11, this arrangement and 2, 1, 3, 10, 11, 10, 11 this arrangement according to this formula would, ha would have been the same. So you must also multiply by 5 factorial because that is the number of ways in which after choosing the numbers you can arrange. So this is assuming that the row has exactly three winning numbers uh, if row has four winning numbers it would it would be 5c4 plus 5 minus 5c1 into 5 factorial all the five numbers fairly improbable but still it will be 5c5 into 5 minus 1c0 into uh, 5 factorial so the answer just is adding these three numbers multiplying by n and the and yeah what do the denominator would be 5n man, 5n factorial and the total number of tickets is 5n factorial this is sorry oh i'm sorry yeah fi, uh, for choosing the number of tickets so uh, this is just this is uh, in fact this is just directly the description from the editorial that is if you look at the editorial you will just find the same words <laughs> so uh, probably is number of winning by okay you can probably just have a look at the ca computations now the n outside is the number of rows that is this is a fairly simple problem but the idea really with the problems involving probability is that in, that is it is not the probabilistic part that is the probability part or the expectation part which is hard what typically is hard is how you co count the configurations or how you define the configurations the formula typically for probability would be just uh, the state would be multiplied into f of typical probability problems are dynamic programming problems so state would just be probability into sum of probability into the child state or something of that sort so uh, I'll go on to the next problem which is again from a fairly recent contest uh, I think you can read this problem statement now uh, both these problems are of easy difficulty that is my point here is that 
whether probability comes up in a very hard problem or very easy problem, the concept is pretty much the same. All right, so I'll just describe the problem statement. There is a bank and the bank has n account holders. Now, uh, the ba each week the bank has a draw, okay, each account holder gets k lotteries if his account balance is k. Account balance is a whole, is a number. Uh, let's just assume that account balance is an integer. That is, as account balances are integers. Uh, so, uh, f uh, for in this problem, account balance is an integer. So, he gets k lotteries if his account balance is k. Now, each week, the bank has a random lot in which, uh, in which uh, they choose one, num one number between, uh, let's say, the sum of, to that is, the total number of lotteries that they would have distributed would have been the sum of all the money they have, each person has in his bank. Because for each dollar I have, I get one lottery. So, would have been the sum of all the, that is the total money that they have in bank. So, uh, they choose a random lottery from this sum, that is, uh, they choose a random number from 1 to this sum and the guy holding it would get weekly jackpot dollars. So, the uh, parameters of this problem are weekly jackpot, k and n and uh, another term which I'll define in the next point. So, they, define, they give weekly jackpot dollars to the guy who uh, holds a lottery which is, which which they, they which they randomly choose each week now you are customer number zero and you just want to know the expected number of uh, you, your expected uh, balance after w weeks uh, that is so expectation as i defined is uh, for example if my random variable is my bank balance my expectation would be probability that i have this bank balance into this bank balance that is x into probability that the expected random variable takes this value x so the constraints given are w less than equal to 1000 n less than equal to 50 so as i said we can at most do we can do probably 4 e8 iterations in one second and the time limit is around one second so can anyone give me can anyone come up with some some kind of solution to this problem uh, let's just say that uh, you iterate over all the possible, uh, like, uh, you win one time or you win two times or you win three times, so that will be from zero to w times. Alright. So the probability of winning i times is k by n raised to i. And uh, probability of winning first time is, what is k? Uh, uh, no, uh, see, if you win the first time, you, the balance in the second time would be k plus weekly jackpot. Uh, so you will get k plus weekly jackpot lotteries. So you cannot directly compute the probability that I win k times in one go. So the next week, this much amount is what I have to take probability that I have found. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I not follow that final statement of yours. What? what? Okay. Um, I'm assuming that if I win, I get this much amount in my account. Right. Right, yeah. Okay. So uh, basically this is in a loop again. But how... Okay, so uh, you say that if I win, of course, I, my account balance would be... I am customer number zero, so let's assume that uh, the account is given in an array A. So my account balance in the second step would be A naught plus just for the sake of simplicity, I just say J is the jackpot dollar. So, my if I win, my account balance would be this. If I lose, my account balance would have been A naught. So, yeah, half. So the probability is half of uh, winning or losing. Uh, not half exactly. The probability of winning would be that is what you just said. Probability of winning would be A naught by S. So. What is Aziz's expectation? So essentially, what your solution should be something like probability into probability into some value plus one minus probability into some value. So you said that if e of x plus y is equal to uh, e of x plus e of y, right. even if x and y are dependent. Right. So if in this problem, if we say x, we define x of i. So x of i is one if I win uh, the ith week. X of i. What is i? Uh, i is some big number. So I'm, uh, there are some x of i is 1 if uh, i win weeks, right? so if i win in the i week okay so ultimately i have to find e of x1 plus x2 up till xw right so is in, are all these x i dependent or independent because my account money is changing 
Uh, what I'm thinking of is uh, about your definition of x. That is, the statement surely holds. So, uh, x of i is the probability that I win in the i turn. Is your definition right? Let's write that down. Probability that I win in the i tweak. Probability that I win in the i tweak. That I win in the i tweak. Sorry, is a random variable. No, first thing is, uh, random variable takes a value, right? So you are saying, uh, okay. Uh, Can you give me the expected number of weeks in which I uh, No, no, I'm sorry, uh, what? I mean, uh, so uh, this one will give me the expected number of weeks in which I can uh, win, not the expected balance, I guess. That is what you define is x of i is 0 if I win in the i-th and 1 if I win in j-th which is essentially probability that I win in the i-th week, right? So I don't see how some of it would, right? So uh, first thing to note is, okay, uh, any other, yeah? Would it some increase by weekly uh, jackpot dollars every, uh, every, every week? Yeah. yeah. So initially uh, the property of winning is uh, uh, current balance divided by the total sum. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so you add or? Uh, to your balance, you add uh, that probability to the uh, expected coming, uh, into which jackpot dollars. So that's your expected uh, balance after one round. Mm -hmm. So the next round, what you do is uh, that's your expected balance. So the total sum just increases by jackpot. So that balance divided by the previous sum plus jackpot dollars into jackpot dollars. So you. Uh, can we be a bit slow as in we are dealing with equations here, right? <laughs> yeah, every instant. Uh, uh, but every okay after every iterations, some of the uh, some of the expected uh, some of the balance expected balance of every uh, customer, I mean every uh, account holder would be right. Yeah, this is that. So my current balance say is x. Okay, x by s uh, is the property of new money this time. Mm -hmm. And the pro uh, and the expected amount of cash I'll this time is x by s into uh, weekly rank for dollars. So the by the next iteration I uh, add that to my balance. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 okay, uh, go to the next slide. And if I'm given the number of times that I have won, I can have an idea of, that is assuming I'm, I'm just trying to brute force, uh, the best way to brute force would have been, or as Venkatesh says, brute force would have been a vector int account number, a vector int account balance for each possibility. But you can construct this by just having, by just knowing what my present week is and how many times I have won. That is, I, it, I do not really care if John or Jack wins uh, because all that matters is mod s other than my present balance. So, uh, yeah, so you can re represent your state as present week comma times one, then it, it essentially turns down to 1000 cross 1000 dp. So is anyone not clear with the dp formulation? That is, my recurrence would essentially be f, I'm sorry, f of let's say uh, p comma t is equal to probability that i win would be a naught plus t times j by a naught that is let's say it's s mod s plus p elapsed p into j into f of t plus 1 comma t plus 1 uh, plus 1 minus this term <laughs> plus 1 minus the same term into f of p plus 1 comma t. So yeah, uh, a better solution would be to prove that after k rounds the increase, I, that is you can just prove that uh, as you said after k iterations the amount that I get would essentially be uh, uh, proportional to my initial balances. So that is a better solution and I, you can, in fact, the, in fact there were about five or six different approaches which were taken by contestants. I would really suggest that you go to the website and just look at this problem. But the idea is how, means the idea that I wanted to emphasize was how expectation arises into DP solutions.